Hello everyone, welcome back. I am the Dark Light Emissary, and this is the episode 6 of this retrospective series covering the Legions and their Primarchs. This episode will cover the 6th Legion, the Space Wolves Legion, and their Primarch, the Lord of Wolves, Lemon Roos. And uh, this Legion is amongst one of the most storied ones, um, doing a bit of a refresher on their lore they have some of the most of it and uh i'm gonna do my best to of course be brief about this because that is the goal of this series so one of the main things to know about this legion especially during the horse heresy era and great crusade era is they were a utterly savage legion um they kind of have a reputation even in the modern 40k times of being a uh, viking inspired based legion and chapter and uh they are definitely that during the 30k horse heresy era as well and now this legion is considered a special one and i what i mean by that is the emperor seemed to trust this legion specifically along with uh, their primarch more so than many of the other legions uh, in doing a bit of side research for this specific one, um, it turns out that the Space Wolves were given as much secrecy in the beginning as the Alpha Legion as well. So there's something about this Legion that was kept secret and um, only privy to the Emperor. And uh, by being that way, the Emperor also gave them special assignments. And one of the rumors about their Primarch is that Lemon Roos might have executed one or both of the missing legions primarchs, but that is pure speculation. Uh, but the uh, but Lemon Roos is known as the Emperor's executioner, so uh, he had that title, and uh, we are not sure why, except that perhaps that is why. Um, that being said, uh, one of the things about the primarch that is unique is that he has fought possibly more Primarchs one on one uh, compared to any of his brothers. He has fought uh, the Lion. He has fought Horus. He has fought Magnus the Red. He has fought uh, Angron. Um, and he may or may not have fought Alpharius or Omegon of the Alpha Legion. Um, but that is a little, a little more ambiguous as anything is when you're talking about the Alpha Legion. But we will talk about them uh, when we get to them. So uh, another thing about Russ is he is he is kind of a gregarious character. Uh, you know, easy to laugh and kind of goof off and kind of be brotherly to his Primarchs. But he's also easy to anger and treat some of his brother Primarchs with disdain especially uh, during the crusade and up through the horse, he, uh, horse heresy, Magnus the Red and the Thousand Sons. He despised that legion. And um, if you are a fan of either of those legions, the Thousand Sons or Space Wolves, you know, this is a constant debate on the forums on um, you know, how much of a hypocrite each legion is and, you know, the Space Wolves. And I'll be honest, I, I tend to love the Thousand Sons. Um, no, I don't think Magnus did uh, nothing wrong, but <laughs> but uh, uh, anyway, I digress. My point being, though, is Russ was kind of known for uh, confronting his brothers and was not afraid to do that, and neither was his legion. And one of the most interesting things I found regarding their legion is early in their history, they actually basically had a form of commissars that would summarily execute the most rowdy legionaries during compliance actions. Um, one of the earliest compliance actions, uh, the disciplinary corps in the Space Wolves were basically summarily executing Space Wolves until they stopped massacring the populace once compliance was achieved. So the, the Space Wolves were not terribly removed from perhaps a reputation the world leaders are more known for. And I found that a bit interesting. It was actually something I did not quite know but I've never found too much interest in the Space Wolves personally. So uh, while I know quite a bit about them just from having been 
you know, reading lore for the last 15 years, they have not been one I have focused directly on. Um, I'm probably going to change that because there's a lot to learn about them, especially during the heresy and pre-heresy era. Um, they were often on secret assignments and sent to do special work for the Emperor, which I find interesting. Um, however, they were at odds with legions like the Alpha Legion, um, which also was tasked with doing special work for the Emperor. Um, and so I wonder if there was a bit of a rivalry there or, um, you know, challenge for position amongst both of them. Now, another unique thing about the Space Wolves is they have an aspect to their gene seed that does make them uh, kind of have wolfish traits, hence their name. Uh, they develop fangs and um, their eyes, uh, you know, look more canine and uh, they they have that specific trait to them that um, many other legions do not have. Uh, and they do have a gene seed inability or instability, I should say, to where they can mutate into creatures called wolfen. Um, and that is kept um, very secret by the legion uh, because instability and gene seed can get you visited by the Inquisition, which is not a group you want to be noticed by. But the Space Wolves are seem immune to any sort of criticism, even in the modern era. Perhaps that ancient order or favoritism by the Emperor is just unassailable because, I mean, the, you name it, the Space Wolves have fought it, whether they're loyal to loyalists or not. Uh, they've, they've fought and killed an Inquisitor or several Inquisitors. They've fought Grey Knights and slain them. Uh, they've executed flesh terrors. They've, they've done so much that they get away with that there must be some kind of standing order that the High Lords of Terra still know about that they cannot be touched. They have some sort of immunity, is my thinking. Um, and we just aren't sure why that is, I don't think. Uh, the, the Space Wolves are a very uh, in-your-face legion. They, you know, they, they prefer melee and direct combat in the direct, most possible way. And uh, it is said about them that they are not world builders or, you know, world garrisoners. You know, they, they will come to your, come to a planet that needs compliance during the, her during the Great Crusade, and they will wipe it clean for you and then move on to the next compliance action. Um, if, you, if you need a close to a nuclear option, you send the Space Wolves in because they will ruthlessly protract their campaign against their enemies. Uh, now, one of the things that is kind of considered hypocritical about the Space Wolves is they have a very big distrust of psychers, uh, but only psychers that they consider are using sorcery, which was a big issue they had with the Thousand Suns. Now, curiously enough, the Space Wolves have their own psychers, uh, and these psychers, though, are considered druids, basically, and they use the excuse of, well, we're pulling our magic from the soul of Fenris, the world that they're from. But it, it's actually, it's actually, uh, you know, still war power. It, it's kind of considered a hypocritical point, but the Space Wolves were one of the uh, pushing groups behind the uh, censure of any legions having a librarius of psychers. Uh, and when the um, decree from Nakia happened, uh, or Nasia happened, the Space Wolves still kept their psychers. Uh, so that was a point of contention when they later attacked Prospero and the Thousand Suns. And it can be argued that uh, because of their brashness and their hatred for the Thousand Suns, they uh, pushed that legion directly into Chaos's hands in desperation. Now, you can argue that the Thousand Suns, which we'll go into when we get to them, were, you know, damned from the word go. You know, like they were, they had a Chaos God's eyes on them for, you know, a long time. Uh, and it was Zench who has many plots and plans. If uh, Lemon Roos hadn't attacked Prospero and been deceived into nearly destroying them, then someone else would have probably something worse would have happened. We don't know. But basically, uh, long story short, uh, 
the Space Wolves and Lemon Roos were sent by the Emperor to arrest Magnus the Red and bring him to Terra. That did not happen. Instead, Russ tried to uh, kill Magnus and failed. And uh, Magnus and Reverse's Legion escaped into the warp and became uh, valuable allies to Horus due to uh, Lemon Versus um, uh, brashness there. And even uh, one of his closest confidants, uh, a uh, space wolf named Bajorn, um, even called Russ out. You know, Russ said something to the effect of later in a book, you know, like, ah, oh, we have to do it though. You know, you saw how those guys were. And, and Jordan was like, no, we didn't have to do it. You know, that's not true. We we gave into our bloodlust, you know, and let our hatred fuel our conflict against the Suns. We we definitely could have handled that differently because, I mean, they went hard against Prospero. They, they burned that place to cinders and ash and mostly out of a hatred for them that not completely misplaced, but still pushed them right into the traitor's hands and... I am of the opinion that the Thousand Suns are the most justified Chaos Legion in the 40k era. Um, they focus most of their plots against the wolves because the wolves destroyed their entire culture. And so, uh, you know, the, the, the Suns don't like the Imperium in general, but they tend to focus their efforts against uh, the Space Wolves. And I am all for that kind of karma retribution, quite honestly. So, um, Regarding the Space Wolves, they are a uh, very melee focused legion, and they are kind of, they're basically shock troops. They're sent in to, you know, like, they will seek out where the heaviest fighting is and keep fighting uh, constantly and um, without end uh, until their enemies are dead or they lie dead. Uh, they are still pretty savage into the modern era, however, after the heresy was over, um, Russ uh, did help to retrain his legion to be a bit more temperate in their judgments because he was not um, at the Siege of Terra due to some of his brash decision making. And he felt personally responsible for, uh, you know, not helping the Emperor survive against Horus in the final fight, not being there to, to help at the end. Um, now, one thing about Russ, though, is he did fight Horus during the heresy and stabbed Her uh, Horus in the side with a uh, special spear the Emperor gave him. And that opening in Horus' defense might have ended up helping the Emperor with defeating him when we get to the final book coming out soon for the Siege of Terror a conclusion. We don't know that for certain, but, you know, uh, again, Russ kind of played a pivotal role there. If that's the case, but we we don't know that yet. But uh, but Russ was definitely part of the scouring with his legion after the uh, siege of Terra, and you know they helped push the traitors back to the Eye of Terror. And then about 200 years after the heresy, um, Russ was giving a speech to his men um, on their homeworld of Fenris, and uh, he started seeing a vision his eyes glazed over he stopped speaking and then he brought all of his men together and all his closest confidants and spoke with them about some instructions and left with them except for Bjorn the fell handed uh, Bjorn uh, was left to the legion and Bjorn remains the longest serving single member of any legion in the entire Imperium he hasn't turned in a dreadnought and he has woken up every thousand years, I believe, to retell the tale of uh, Russ leaving uh, his legion and going missing at that point. And Russ has not been sighted since. Uh, there have been a lot of um, hunting for him by his legion, though. And uh, the Space Wolves were one of the legions that did not follow the Codex Astartes. They are still a legion strength force. Um, and... So they are a, one of the strongest Space Marine groups in the current era as well because of that. Uh, again, uh, there must be a standing order or something that lets them just disregard any kind of rules and regulations maybe other Marines have to follow. There's just something about them that way. 
Um, so in these great hunts, uh, the Space Wolves have found uh, Russ's armor and other artifacts, uh, you know, hinting at ha him having been to certain places at specific times. But so far, there has not been any sightings of Russ. And um, it's speculated he could be one of the returning Primarchs soon. But I think it's more likely that it will be um, the lion that comes back uh, instead of Russ. Now, um, again, talking about how Russ has been fighting a lot of his brothers over time, uh, there is a big rivalry between the Dark Angels and the Space Wolves because uh, at one point during the Great Crusade, um, an altercation occurred where uh, Russ and the lion have fought each other. Uh, they argued with each other and had basically a fisticuffs match. And eventually Russ realized, you know, what they were doing was childish and laughed about it. Um, leaving his guard open and the lion thought he was being insulted and so the lion punched him and knocked him out and then left with his men um, now every time the space wolves and dark angels meet each other they each cho uh, choose a champion um, and then they duel each other uh, usually to first blood although I believe to the death can occur sometimes as well it probably depends on the individual dark angels and space wolves meet and how much they are uh, you know seem to hate each other i guess uh so that's one interesting rivalry with them of course the space wolves are hated by the thousand suns legion uh traitor legion in 40k era uh for the reasons i already laid out and um that's another main sticking point uh in some of the most recent lore uh fenris was invaded by the thousand suns legion and a grand conflict took place uh, eventually magnus and his sons were Banished, much to my disappointment, but they did get to carry a pretty gruesome toll on the world. And the Space Wolves is kind of a, you know, uh, a, you know, a just karma coming back at you. I mean, the wolves, um, the wolves are like an antithesis to me of a lot of what I would hope for uh, from like the Great Crusade era, because one thing the Thousand Suns were great at during that era was. You know, if they took over a world, they would record all the knowledge of that world. They were scholars. They wanted to preserve and learn new things so that humanity could improve from it. Whereas the Space Wolves were content with just burning everything down. And, uh, you know, at one point even, um, Magnus, you know, confronts Russ and is like, you really do, would just be content with burning down everything, wouldn't you? And Russ is like, yeah, I'm fine with that outcome. It doesn't bother me. And so that kind of brashness has always bugged me about this Legion. Um, I definitely have some bias against them. Um, I'll be honest about it. They are uh, they are cool as aesthetically Legion, but their credo and kind of uh, personality of giving zero Fs about anyone anytime is kind of annoying. You know, they, they will leave brother Legions or brother uh, chapters to die if they just don't like them you know like they're kind of brash that way uh now i mean they're the kind of group though that if you befriend them you will have friends for life for eternity you know they they will come help you if you call that sort of thing but they're also the type that if you make them your enemy you also they will also carry a grudge against you for eternity as well so it's either you take them or you leave them type of mentality with them you know and they they're fine with uh, putting you on their uh, crap list and uh, keeping you there forever. So they are um, definitely a legion that if you want to look into for just pure aesthetic reasons and uh, for having a legion with some of the deeper lore, they, they're fun to study. Uh, and uh, so that's really a bit about them. There is a ton on this Legion. Uh, this one's one of the harder ones for me to not continue going on about because there is really a lot with them. So um, I recommend reading on the wikis about them, picking up some of the books about them like Crossbow Burns. Uh, the Ragnar Black Mane trilogy is not a bad trilogy. I remember reading that as one of the first uh, groups of books I read. But anyway, I will leave it here. Uh, so that has been a bit about uh, Lemon Rus and the Space Wolves Legion. 
Again, as always, if you like this, please subscribe and like the video for more. We will be back again in a day or two with the Seventh Legion. And uh, I look forward to seeing you all on that video. And uh, please comment on this if you have anything you want to bring up. Um, again, this is not meant to be perfect. Just my heart, my personal like, person, my opinion. Just some basic knowledge about this, these legions. And so, as always, bring your light into the dark places. And I hope you have a great day or night, wherever you are. Thank you. Good night.